My next unboxing from the Silent X Physio series is going to be the Extreme, which as you may guess, based on the size of the box and the name, is the highest end product in the Physio lineup. It's also classified as a less than 18 decibel cooler, and it is geared to be a silent CPU cooler. So they've got logos on here for every processor under the sun, including anything on socket AM2, AM3, 775, LGA1156, as well as LGA1366. In fact, they've even got a Core i9 logo on there. That's kind of funny, considering that Intel uh, scrapped that branding a little while back. I guess they designed this back when it looked like Intel was going to make a Core i9 brand. The heatsink requires a case with adequate space to fit properly. Check to ensure you have Oh, this is important. Okay, so if you're thinking of installing this one, check these numbers to make sure it will fit in your system. Here's the overall specifications as well as the compatibility, like I said, pretty much everything. So Core i9 is what they were going to call the Core i7 Extreme 6 core, but then they did not end up doing that. All right. Oh, I was <laughs> I had the box backwards. Look at that. You can actually see into the box and you can see the overall shape of this cooler. It's got the quietest noise levels, greatest efficiency, and superior performance. Designed for gamers and overclockers and those seeking extreme performance. Or just those who are hit by this heat wave that seems to be hitting the entire continent this summer. So we've got five effective 8mm heat pipes. Wow, those are big. And those all directly interface with the CPU core. So those are going right on the CPU heat spreader. You can expect Silent X heat sinks to offer maximum thermal efficiency at all times. They've got optimized fan blades, so it means it is using a Silent X fan, which you would expect, and it has a universal mounting system, which I had a look at in much closer detail on the compact unboxing, so I probably won't look at it quite as closely on this one. Let's go ahead and get this open and see what we have inside. So the first thing we find inside is a box. Very exciting box. It's white. And inside the box we will find, likely, a bunch of mounting gear. Okay, nothing else. This is it. Okay, so it's pretty much exactly the same accessory package that we found with the compact. So yeah, I probably really won't look all that closely at this, but I will uh, have a quick look. So we've got a fan speed controller. Okay, very high quality one. I've actually used these before. They're really good. Then we have a universal backplate. So it's for AM2, AM3, 775, 1156, 1366. We have the AMD mounting hardware, and then we have the Intel mounting hardware. They've also included some extra fan mounting grommets, as well as some thermal compounds. So the fan mounting grommets are so you can install an additional fan in a push-pull configuration on this particular heatsink. All right, so uh, once again, we see are greeted with a non-silvery fan. So this is a Silent X fan, but not from their iXtreme A series. And they've actually, oh, I hope they've got two sets. Oh, maybe they do. Yes, yes, well, there are two sets of fan grommets in this one. In the compact, it was actually, the fan was mounted for me already. So I'm going to have to go ahead and uh, figure out how to mount the fan on camera here for you. That should be quite an ordeal. Oh, here's a little um, a double sided Velcro thing to mount your fan controller somewhere in your case. Okay, so what we do is first let's take the heat sink out. Oh, that's a heavy sucker. All right, so we go ahead and slide that in there. Okay, there we go. It's in there. And then we go ahead and slide this in the bottom. I actually like the look of this heat sink overall. It looks, uh, looks very, very sharp. It's got nice shiny heat pipes. It's got a nice finish to the top of it. You can see that the, the metal, um, the aluminum fins actually have a bit of a bumply texture to them. And I'll show you that a little bit more closely once I'm finished mounting the fan here. As far as fan mounting systems go, this is actually pretty clever because it doesn't involve any um, clips, which can be extremely unwieldy and are difficult to, you know, this is something that you never consider either. Is like, yeah, what if I do want to mount a second fan in push-pull, but I want to do it later. So you have to actually like keep those clips somewhere and not lose them. Whereas if it's just a couple little rubber grommets, it's no big deal. So you just line up the rubber grommets in there and in there. And I'm not paying attention to where the camera's looking right now because I'm actually paying attention to where the heat sink is positioned right now. And then I'm gonna go ahead and line up the very last one. So, okay, so this isn't the easiest thing in the world, but I think most of the difficulty is the fact that I'm trying to operate a camera at the same time. I think if I had a cameraman today, that, that would make my life a lot easier. Maybe not my life a lot easier, but certainly this video. Okay, so you go ahead and pull these through. 
just give them a good tug. And then I guess if you want to, you can uh, run them through the second hole. Oh, hold on. Let me see if I can figure this out. Okay, hold on. Maybe I just have to pull harder. Remember, when in doubt, force it. Yes, there we go. So then if you want to, you can run it through the second hole, but that's not entirely necessary. You just want to heave on it. Ah, until it comes through. There we go, that was pretty easy. And I'm sorry, you'll have to bear with me because I am OCD and I do need to put those through or else my day will be ruined. Yes, I said it, ruined. Three, come on, go through. Thank you. And the last one, if only I had a cat here to help me. Oh yeah, this is a lot easier if you just actually pull them through one at a time because there's quite a bit of give in the one that's in the ones that you've already put on, so you can actually pull this away to um, to line up the last one, even when three are already in. So go ahead and pull that through and bring it through the second hole. And there we go. That didn't take so long. Oh, it might have taken longer if you're just sitting watching me do it. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a gap. Not as much of a gap as we saw on the compact cooler, but there's a slight gap on the side. There's a bit more of a gap on the top and the bottom. So we're going to see a little bit of airflow leakage there in all likelihood, but it shouldn't impact performance too much. Most of the coolers on the market do have a similar sort of configuration. Now this is one thing that I really like about this cooler right off the bat, and that's the fact that all of the heat pipes line up with the part of the cooling tower that is going to see the most airflow. So you can see through here, okay, so you see where the blades of the fan actually start around here. That's where the dead zone is in the middle where there's no airflow because that's where the hub of the fan is. And then the blades of the fan actually blow air through an area kind of uh, this shape. So they position most of the heat pipe cooling where it's actually going to take advantage of the blades of the fan. Now it's quite a dense heat, uh, a fin arrangement, so that means that you would benefit for sure from putting an additional fan on here, but it's not too, 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 too dense. I've seen worse. In fact, I think the compact one was even a little bit more dense than this one, though I could be mistaken. Now, something that I said I'd look at in more close detail later is the slightly, hear that? slightly textured finish on each of these aluminum fins. And the reason for that is it gives them just a little bit more surface area when the air is blowing through, and you're gonna sacrifice a little bit of noise performance, although you probably wouldn't even be able to measure it because these are such small dimples, but you'll get a little bit more air turbulence in there and you will get a little bit more surface area and therefore a little bit more cooling performance out of a design like that. Last thing I want to have a look at, now I suspect this would perform really well on an AMD CPU because they have those nice big heat spreaders. Same with an LGA 1366 because it's the same thing, nice big heat spreaders, but we've got five huge 8mm heat pipes. You really can't ask for more than that. I mean, some guys have more heat pipes on the cooler, but they're not using 8 mils. These things are enormous. So you're going here. Look at how thick that is. So when you actually put a CPU on here, you're gonna be completely covering the CPU in heat pipe. And they've machined the bottom of it very flat. I'll do the obligatory finger shot thing, although it really doesn't mean a whole lot. I really like the shape of the blades and I can't, or the, of the fins, and I can't even really tell you why. I just think it looks kind of cool. Here's your universal hold down, as well as a little bit of additional heat sink cooling directly on the CPU. You know, it's funny, it wasn't that long ago you could cool a CPU with just one of those and a little tiny loud fan on it. Then that turned into a chipset fan, and now it's like a supplementary cooler on a, on a real heat sink. Anyway, thank you for checking out my unboxing and uh, first look at the Ephysio Extreme CPU cooler from Silenex.